Every year, humanity as a whole produces over 2 billion tons of waste. To give you an idea of just how much waste that really is, if you put it all into the back of trucks and line them up in a row, they would circle the planet 24 times. This staggering amount of waste is produced in part because 99% of the stuff you and I buy is trashed within only six months of purchasing it. Hello and welcome to another episode of Preview of Tomorrow. I am your host, Mike Lake. In today's preview, we will be taking a peek underneath the lids of our garbage bins. As I speak with Andy Crofts about the inefficiencies of waste management systems today and the solution his company, Inevo, has developed to more effectively deal with the waste we produce today to ensure a cleaner planet tomorrow. Innovation, resiliency, discovery. Join Mike Lake, President and CEO of Leading Cities, as we explore the technologies shaping the possibilities of our future with a preview of tomorrow. Welcome, Andy, and thank you so much for uh, for joining us today. For our listeners, Andy Crofts is the Business Development Director at Inevo, an innovative waste management company that continues to reimagine the waste collection industry, saving clients money and saving the planet at the same time. Now, before we learn more about Inevo itself, Andy, I'd like to step back and ask from your perspective, what is a major challenge facing society over the next five, 10 or more years from now? Okay, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a really, really good question and, and, and many thanks for having me on board. Um, I, I think one of the key um, key things that we, we all need to be conscious of at the moment is is around recycling and, and upcycling products, especially with the with the issue around plastic usage. Um, we're all, we've already seen that um, uh, our, our friends across the sea, China, have, have kind of get now they've they've kind of pulled the trap door upon the amount of recycling that they're taking in uh, and 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 waste that they're taking in. So that's that's meant that um, leaders in in cities are having to look at different ways to do things, and and certainly within that waste industry as well, um, they're having to look at how they can reuse some of these products and get them recycled and get them out of the waste stream. And there's a huge, huge challenge. And I think this is where the biggest challenge comes in is that that is for um, waste producers, which is all of us. We all produce waste and whether that's at home um, and with our home, with our household bins at home um, or whether it's in the office. Because um, again, um, we we generate probably around about five kilos of waste per person uh, in an office environment um, per week. So so again, th there's lots of um, challenges for for ourselves, uh, and and I think we can all sort of help in the way that we we look at waste and understand it. And I think that's where having that deeper look and a deeper focus into an industry. Um, by the use of data, and that doesn't matter whether it's it's data coming from a, a production plant that is that's recycling plastic, or whether that's from scales that are on the back of trucks and and weighing bins as they're going in, and knowing whereabouts in the community more waste is being generated. The more data that we can have, the better informed that we'll be, and the better informed the public can be as well. Um, citizens can't improve if they don't know a base mark of where they are in terms of how much is being recycled in their in their areas. Um, so, so this is something that's really, really key. Um, and, and we're seeing more and more um, cities and, and residential areas are starting to look at that now and starting to build in initiatives for residents to to have those kind of uh, sort of uh, payback for for doing more recycling. Um, so we know that uh, there was an area in London that was doing a, a project where they got all their residents to recycle more and they gave them an extra piece of play equipment on a local part that they chose and things like that. So there's lots of ways to incentivize um, uh, citizens to, to do more. Um, but I, I think the key one is if we look at what the impact on the environment is, um, we, sh we should just do more anyway. 
And of course, you're joining us from the UK right now. And, and I once saw this BBC report that kind of put some of what you're talking about into very interesting terms, that the world produces over 2 billion tons of, of solid waste every year, just in municipal solid waste, which putting that into another perspective, can fill over 800,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. I mean, it's a tremendous amount of waste you're talking about. Of course, here in the U.S., uh, we are the number one waste producers in the world. Um, when you think about, when the average person thinks about the waste industry, let's be honest, we take it for granted, right? We produce waste, we put it in our bins, we put the bins out by the, the curb or in a, uh, a larger bin or whatever, and it gets taken away. And that's kind of it. We've we've washed our hands of it uh, and it's it's gone. You just talked about, you know, data collection and, and analysis, et cetera, et cetera. This is a much higher tech kind of version of waste collection than what I think most of us realize is happening, or at least can happen. Before we talk about the, the innovation of today, when was the last real innovation within waste collection prior to current day uh, collection methods? I would say that the, the, the probably the most significant piece of, of, of technology to hit now. Now, the waste industry has been very averse to technology coming in. Um, maybe a few pieces of software that are in for recording um, some items. But I would say probably the most innovative um, sort of solution that, that's, that's, that's um, come to the industry uh, over the last sort of 10, 12 years it's probably been the ability to weigh individual bins onto the back of a truck um and and that's probably been been a key one that's but that's that's allowed because i think that the the key um is to be able to understand where waste is coming from i think that that's a key one so uh, a, a a a truck would go around and collect a, a number of uh, containers and, and dumpsters and, and and cans and things um and get back in and go and go to the the dump site and and dump eight tons of material nobody had any idea where that material came from so the ability to weigh um bins onto the back of truck was was kind of almost the start of what has come along now and, and where we're now seeing lots more innovations and, and cameras and that can fit inside bins and, and and obviously sensors that can measure fill levels things like that so i think that was kind of the starting point that really started to to move things on um and then now you start to see routing uh, applications and software that has also been introduced so we're really kind of talking for the better part of two centuries or more, there really hasn't really been a major change in, in the waste collection industry until now. Well, yeah, because I mean, if you think, uh, again, not sure what the, the US been like, but if you think back um, probably only 12, 15 years ago, you would have had to been putting your um, waste into bin liners and leaving it at the, at the bottom of your, your driveway for it to be collected. There, was, there wasn't even any receptacles at home um and and still here in in the uk we've still got areas of of the uk where that that practice happens because there's not enough room for a bin to be stored somewhere and things like that so and um, this this there's still many 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 challenges um that, that cities are facing because of a lack of space and lack of room um to actually provide enough uh, waste receptacles for for residents and citizens to use so let's let's now talk a, a, a bit about an Evo because an Evo is certainly changing the dynamics of waste collection. Tell us um, what what does an Evo do for the for the average person? Can you explain how how the solution works and and why it's so important? So a, a real a really good way of, of of kind of saying what we do um, to to the to somebody that doesn't understand the industry really well is we lift the lid on a bin and we take a look inside. And we do that millions of times a day, but without actually physically having to lift the lid. So we have our, we've got sensor technology that we've designed, um, and not just for collection, 
Um, we also do the reverse, so for, for deliveries as well. So um, we use it for delivering grit to grit bins, for example, for, for, for salting roads and things like that. So, so we can use it for either. It's measuring a fill level and whether that's rising or falling. But that, that, that's just a piece of hardware. So we've got our, our little yellow minion that sits, sits in, in thousands of bins and we, we've, got, we've got over 60,000 sensors out there currently. Um, wow. gathering data and, and taking taking readings every hour um, and feeding that data back to us. So, so what we do then with the data is we help waste management companies then to be more resourceful in the way that they go and collect a receptacle. And and I think that the current period that we're in now with this, this unprecedented uh, virus that's, that's affecting us is waste management companies are, are, are seeing the, the, the effects of the way that this kind of now the population has, has moved and changed. So there's been a lot of offices that have been closed and people are working from home. So suddenly the commercial real estate sector has been affected and those waste management companies that have been collecting from those have been hugely affected because mm. there's very few people in those offices yeah. and everyone's now taking that shift to working from home and exercising differently. So we've, um, in the UK, we've done a, a with a Newcastle City Council, we've done a, a full city rollout across every one of their street litter bins. So every street litter bin in Newcastle has got one of our minions in there. And during the, the, the pandemic and, and, a, and a period of lockdown that we went through last March when we had the first initial stage, the change in behavior in their street litter bins, again, was, was unprecedented. Um, so all of the kind of the city bins that would normally be emptied two or three times a day went to once every two weeks. And then we started to see localized runs and walks where, where everybody was allowed to go out and exercise and walk the dog and, and take the kids out for a walk and on the bikes and just to get again uh, the, their hour a day exercise we started to see then the parks bins and street bins uh, were actually then being and the, and the usage was going up through the roof now without that technology how would a city know that those those differences in behaviors were happening we could all kind of go yeah well people yeah they're going to be home so we know that the household bin is going to fill up quicker but it's it's having that data and that office block that's got eight different floors with eight different businesses in and and some some maybe key businesses that are actually keeping the the, the health sector going um they may be providing software or they may be doing some laboratory testing things so there's people were in the, the the population in these buildings were so transient that it's it was impossible for a human to actually manage that data so actually to have that those ears and eyes in the bins to be able to feed back and and take a read and have a look and send those messages back to those waste management companies so they could use the data then to become much more resourceful, target the, um, the, the resources to where it's needed. So all these bins that suddenly started changing from a one, once a week collection to once every every day or once every two days was re is really key. I think that that's probably the an easiest way to, to kind of explain it. But um, but yeah, we're, we're those with those eyes in the bin and and for us being able to see what happens in a bin and then take that to a waste management company, provide them with software then that can manage their, their vehicles and their trucks. And again, reduce unnecessary driving. We're under, we're reducing risk on the road. We're reducing the CO2 emissions that's coming from that truck. So there's so many more additional things that we can do. Mm. And on the flip side of that, because we're monitoring what's going in the bin, where we've got, communal bins that are being used by a, a number of citizens or a number of businesses, we also then can start to track the, the, the volume that's in that bin and we can use volume to weight ratios. And then we can also then analyze how much recycling material is making its way into a bin. And again, that helps then with, with cities to start to do some targeted um, education around the amount of recycling that's happening in an area.
and help to get that increase in. That suddenly then starts to get waste out of the waste stream. We can start to recycle more. Um, so yeah, I, I think we are very disruptive in 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 what we're doing within the industry um, because we are those kind of the eyes that's happening and and we can see what, everything that's happening within uh, within a container, within a bin, within a skip. Um, it, it's it's those forward thinking waste management companies now that are starting to take that data and, and really understand the benefits of it um, and I think during this last say the, the, the period that we've just gone through in the last year uh, with the virus affecting so many different parts of, of the world and, and our daily lives um, I think they found that, that data has become even more valuable. Well, as they say, data is the, the 21st century's oil, right? Um, so what you're doing is is providing a tremendous amount of value where uh, that value didn't exist before. Now, you talked about how each of us is a producer of waste, and, and I know the World Bank has estimated that some 70% increase in the amount of waste that uh, we produce today will will be produced we will be producing by 2050. I mean, that's an cr incredible uh, amount of waste that we have to deal with. So tell me, we have just about 30 seconds left. Our time goes by way too fast here. Uh, but for that average person, um, in addition to curbing how much waste we're producing, how is it that the average person is impacted by the work that Inevo is, is doing? And how can the average person help to make sure that and Evo is is working for them in their community. That, that's a really good question, and giving me thirty seconds to answer that's going to be a difficult one. But I, I think the the value that we can give back to to back to them is that they, they can actually get an insight into that area that they live. Um, they'll get an insight into how everybody else is behaving within that area. Um, and again seeing less trucks on the road is really important so just being mindful about when they when they're off shopping what they're buying how it's packaged what they do with that packaging when they get home and reducing that waste that goes into the container means that actually we can continue to reduce the amount of collections that happen which means there'll be less trucks on the road which means it's going to be a much nicer and safer environment for for their children to go out and, and play on in the streets and things like that so i think that's the um the the key one is to is people are watching what you're putting in your bin i think that's the key key message well as i said before you know waste uh, then especially the waste that we produce and how it gets removed from our lives is something i think most of us take for granted but you've excited us about the possibilities how of how it can be done much more efficiently saving money protecting the planet um and certainly increasing the efficiency of this whole system that hasn't been changed enough. Um, so thank you for being disruptive and for for getting trash haulers and municipalities and, and businesses around the world to think about the impact of the waste that they're producing and, and what happens to it when it is taken away. Um, one last question for you. For anybody who's interested in learning more about an Evo, what's the best way to contact an Evo? So the, the best way to, is to get onto our website, which is www.enevo.com. Um, again, we'll have all our information on there. We've, we're also on Twitter. So you, I mean, you can find us on there. We've also got Facebook pages as well. So um, Twitter's a good one to find out what we're doing because that's across the world. Um, but, but yeah, get on our website um, and you can see how we're affecting uh, business and, and waste and how it's being collected. Wonderful. Andy Crofts, thank you so much for joining us on Preview of Tomorrow. We look forward to hearing more about Inevo and all your success and the impact you're having around the world in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Preview of Tomorrow. In addition to thanking our guest, I want to thank Peter Roy and Demetria Bridges for making this podcast possible. If you enjoyed this episode, Please subscribe and encourage others to also join us each week in previewing the possibilities of tomorrow. Preview of Tomorrow is brought to you by Leading Cities, a global nonprofit driving resilience and sustainability for all by unleashing the potential of the world's cities. 
Join them at leadingcities.org.